Hello and welcome to another episode of Football Manager 20 Guides, where I'm going to take you through the latest features that have been released by Football Manager 2020. Today we saw some fantastic new releases, well some screenshots of the new features that are going to be taking place in next year's game. But before we do that, do not forget to subscribe to my page. All you need to do is go to Captain Birdie Man FM on YouTube, find the subscribe button, press it, come back off it, and then go and watch some fantastic Football Manager videos. I can't wait for Football Manager 2020. I know you can't wait for it. So let's have a look at the features that were released today. Earlier today, at about 5.30 this afternoon, we got some new releases tweeted out by Football Manager. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying the time, because the time's irrelevant if you're watching this in the future. But anyway, we've been sent some new features, and I'm super excited to check them out. So let's have a quick look through them today. So here is the tweet, and let's have a look at the thread. So the first one that comes up is, Your captain will now suggest a code of conduct when you join a new club. A list of fines for different offences that you get the chance to personalise. Okay, this is the first time that I've seen this. Hopefully you can see this quite well on the screen, but you can set out the basically the way that your club is going to be run. How strict you can be, set out your own conduct, which I think is a really good thing. Because if you want to set a philosophy and there's people in there that are, just want to be disruptors, then they can be kind of outed straight away. Being late for training, well, missing training, gone AWOL, Multiple booking ban, second uh, red card, or send off a second booking, sorry, and sent off straight red. Right, I don't, when it comes to my game so far, I am not a disciplinarian. I'm really not. I only really find players if they miss training or they go AWOL. That's about it. Sending offs and second, second yellows, I kind of just give them a bit of a warning. If they get sent off and it leads to a... A, a game being lost or something like that and I just feel like it was stupid from the player then I might go into one week's ban apart from that I don't really give out that many that many fines but I do give out fines when it comes to mistraining gone a well and possibly even multiple booking ban because if a player's just getting booked all the time then maybe it's about time that I looked into my own discipline and took this new feature on board I think it's a great one well done football manager on to the next one you can now find additional talking points for end of season meetings between you and your players, giving you more flexibility and clearer communications. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Let's have a quick look at some of them. I mean, it's showing Watford here, but let's have a quick look at some of what they're saying. So I wanted to take a few moments to mention that over the off season, we'll be forced into making some changes to the squad to help us profit. Oh, I can, all, I can assure that all it's nothing personal. Okay. So, if you get relegated, for instance, and your finances are absolutely through the wall and down at the doldrums, then you can kind of tell the players, instead of just saying, have a good six weeks off, lads, I'll see you back in August or something like that, you actually can say it and be a bit more personal with them and say, a lot of you are going to leave. So that might just kind of buck up a few ideas for a few players who want to stay at the club as well. So that's not a bad idea. I don't really like doing it in the end of the season meetings, but I've actually got less things to do because you just press a button and say, this is what we're looking to do. Is there anything else I want to say? I want to take a few moments to mention that over the off-season, we'll be forced into making some changes to the squad to help the club work towards self-sustainability. I can assure you that it's nothing personal. So at this moment in time, it looks like that obviously Watford have lost a lot of money and their wage budget is through the roof. So they've got to let a lot of players go. And it's just being a bit more personal when it comes to those to end, of, end of season meetings. I, I think it's a big thing about speaking to your player because there's been so many times I've spoken to a player and it's gone wrong or the game hasn't given me the option to actually say the right thing to the player that I actually want to say to him. So this is just a step in the right direction. Games change quickly. I'm not sure what that means. The responsibilities screen has been redesigned as part of, of this you can now ask your assistant to deliver touchline instructions during games. Hmm, okay. Well, I don't really give... <laughs> well, I do. I do. I take that one back. I, I do shout on encouragement, and I use, the t I use the tool where you can shout for a demand a little bit more, or you can push forward, or you can concentrate. I do use that tool all the time. So that's a big one. But I rarely listen to my assistant manager when he's, when he's telling me certain things about a player being getting a yellow card or an opposition player is pulling the strings. I never normally take his advice. The only advice I do take is when he's saying that one of my players is exhausted and he needs coming off. 
So I'm not sure how this is going to help me, but I can imagine if you rely on shouting touchline instructions during a game and not just your team talk at the beginning and at half time, then this would be a big, big feature for you. Plus, again, it's also putting you as a manager to think, well, I want to do all of it. I don't want to give responsibility to my assistant manager. So the quality of your assistant manager doesn't have to be that good. But if you're a little bit like me, who likes to give a lot of responsibility to your assistant manager, it's very, very crucial that you have to bring in a fantastic assistant on board. An improved unemployed experience. There's more information on available jobs, increased press opportunities, and weekly job updates. Not quite sure what this means. So if you are unemployed and you start the game unemployed or you get sacked or you leave a post, then this is what it looks like when you're looking for an available job. So instead of you going to look for it, it does give you recommended available jobs. Okay. And then it's very easy to obviously apply for them. It gives you all the information that you need. So if you do like a bit of a journeyman save and you, and you, and you like moving from job to job, etc., then this could be a really good feature for you. In team meetings, you'll now receive advice from your backroom staff as the best option to select. Brilliant. No more upsetting the room, hopefully. I think this is a really, really key new feature because how many times have you gone to say, say, say a team meeting at a crucial time of your save and it goes absolutely tits up? Nine times out of ten, I'm going to say it, I say the wrong thing. And at the start of it and in crucial key times, during the season, like last minute games or end of season relegation battles, you can say the wrong thing and it can just turn it on its head. So what mostly what I do is I just ignore team meetings because I don't want to say anything at all. So any help from the game is a really big thing for me. And last feature, the team selector offers advice from the start 11 with reasons behind each player. Okay. Through this, you have the option to untick any player suggested and stick with your own pick. Okay. Let's have a quick look at this. So you pick your starting 11, but your assistant manager is saying that there could be a better option. Okay, that makes sense. So you've decided, I think here, these players, so Gomez, etc. He's the goalkeeper. No, no, I've got that one wrong. It's the players that you've already chosen and the assistant manager is saying something underneath. So he's saying, Isaac Success, for instance, is looking in great shape or Quinna is considered a technical player. So this is good. So if you've got them in certain positions and you want them to play as a, like a technical player, like an assist, uh, as like a advanced playmaker or a, an attacking midfielder, someone who's going to have the ball a lot, you need that kind of advice as well. But also, I'm not sure if this means that. I'm not sure what this bit means with the in the red, but we will soon find out when we do start playing the game. And that's it for today. That's it. Just as Miles says and Football Manager says, that's it for today. Do keep an eye out though, because I'm sure there'll be more features that will be dropped. And as soon as they are done, I will bring you them on a quick video like this. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Tell me something that you like about these new features in the comments below. Tell me something that they've missed out and that you wish they could have put on there in the comments below. And we can kind of see if we can push it towards Miles and see if what they can do. Not for this year, obviously, but for the next one. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be back in a couple of days time for some more Football Manager 20 guides. Bye-bye.